2008 unibody MacBook right and left speaker replacement. Make sure that the MacBook is shut down and let's start off by flipping it over. Press in the battery cover latch and remove the panel. Next remove the battery. There are 8 screws that are holding in the bottom case panel. We'll start off by removing the top 4 screws. The first screw is the short screw and the next 3 screws are long screws. On the bottom of the panel there are 4 distinctly small screws. Let's go ahead and remove those and that will release the bottom panel. Once the 8 screws have been removed that are holding down the panel, gently grip it up in the top and remove it out of the way. The DVD Super Drive is located in the top left corner of the MacBook. Let's go ahead and disconnect some cables around the drive. Let's begin by disconnecting the EyeSight and Airport card cables. Next. Let's disconnect the speaker cable. Now remove the two Phillips head screws that are holding down the left speaker. Also just pry the speaker out of the way, leaving the screws inside. Next let's remove the speaker bracket. It's being held down with two Phillips head screws. One of the Phillips head screws is attached to the EyeSight and Airport cable. Let's go ahead and just pry that screw out. Move that out of the way. The actual super drive is being held in with three Phillips head screws. Let's get those screws out of the way. Unplug the super drive ribbon cable that connects it to the logic board. Now that the super drive is free, you can tilt it and gently lift it out of its socket. The right speaker is located right underneath the super DVD drive. Once the super DVD drive has been removed, you can use tweezers to gently pry out the subwoofer and the entire speaker and subwoofer assembly will come free. Reinstalling the right speaker is as easy as taking it out. Just place it back in the same way that you got it and firmly press it in with your finger. Take your replacement super drive and insert it at a 45 degree angle into its socket. Connect the super drive's ribbon cable to the logic board and now you can pursue to screw in the three Phillips head screws that secure the drive in place. Make sure to clip back in any connections that came loose during this installation. Reinstall the speaker bracket with two Phillips head screws. Now reattach the speaker and also screw it in with two Phillips head screws. Reconnect the EyeSight and Airport Peripherals cable, taking your time and making sure that it is firmly locked into its socket. Now clip in the left speaker into the socket and you're done for the DVD Super Drive reinstallation. Gently push your fingers outwards and the memory module should pop right up. The fan is located in the top center of the MacBook and is attached with three Phillips head screws. 
you can go ahead and unscrew those screws but leave them in place as it will be easier when you lift the fan up not to get the screws mixed up with other screws. Gently slide the screwdriver underneath the fan connector and pry up on it gently removing the connection out of its socket. Disconnect the LVDS cable first. Go ahead and disconnect the speaker followed by the EyeSight and the Wi-Fi cable. Next the DVD Super Drive cable and the SATA hard disk cable. The next cable is going to have an eyelash gently lift it up with your fingernail. Use your screwdriver to help you pry it out. This is your LED indicator light cable. Now your trackpad cable. Lift up the eyelash on the keyboard connection. Use a screwdriver to help you pry out the keyboard connection. Now you can remove the shield that guards the trackpad and the keyboard connection. It's connected with two Phillips head screws. Next we're going to disconnect the battery meter. Now let's disconnect the battery connection to the logic board. Now we can remove the LVDS cable bracket. It's connected with two Phillips head screws. The next step is very important. The microphone is glued to the case. We're going to use a pair of tweezers to pry out the microphone and relieve it from the glue. Now pry back the cables and starting with the closest screw to the fan, remove the five Phillips head screws that are holding down the logic board. Gently lift up the logic board, pulling it up and to your left at the same time. You can now flip it over, but it still has two connections on the rear side. Be careful. Disconnect the DC in power board. The logic board is now free to come out. The left speaker is located underneath the logic board. Flip over the logic board, trace down the microphone cable and disconnect it. Now disconnect the speaker cable and gently pry the speaker out. It's being glued in by a rubber piece. It's okay to tear that piece. The speaker will be able to get right placed right back. Reinstall the speaker by placing it the same way it was removed, then reconnect the speaker cable to the logic board. Reconnect the microphone and trace out the microphone cable and plug it back into the speaker.
Reconnect the DC inboard power connector. While moving all the cables out of the way, drop the logic board in, making sure that no connections are trapped. Quickly check all your connections, the battery meter, the battery charger, the keyboard, the trackpad, the LED light, the SATA drive, the super drive, and the EyeSight and Wi-Fi camera, as well as the speaker. Carefully tuck in your battery charging cable. Then make sure that your battery indicator cable is also plugged in. Reattach the five Phillips head logic board screws again starting with the closest one to the fan. Reattach the LVDS cable bracket with two Phillips head screws. Now reattach the LVDS cable, making sure that it's in snug and closing it with its latch. Reconnect the speaker followed by the EyeSight and the Wi-Fi cable. Now the Super DVD drive. Next, the SATA cable for the hard drive. Lift up the latch and reattach the LED light cable. Push down the latch. Reconnect the trackpad. Get a pair of tweezers to help you pry in the keyboard cable. Make sure that the latch is up. This can take practice in several attempts. Make sure not to scratch up the keyboard cable with the tweezers. Place the fan back into its socket and screw it down with three Phillips head screws. You can now reconnect the fan cable. Gently push it in until you hear a click. Place the RAM module at a 45 degree angle. Now gently press down on it until you hear it firmly click. Place the bottom case panel in the same manner that it was removed. Gently pressing down on it making sure that no cable connections are being pinched off. Reinstall the top four screws starting with the shorter top left screw and next the three longer screws. Now reinstall the four smaller bottom screws for the panel. This will finish attaching the panel. Place the battery back into its socket. Now place the battery cover on top. Make sure to use the battery cover latch to firmly lock it in place. <laughs> 